this shall be your meat, M-E-A-T. So when the Bible first refers to meat, when Moses first referred to meat, it didn't mean animals. It meant food. The word meat means food. Okay? And it says every herb bearing seed. What that means is anything that has a seed within itself, that is your meat. And that's what Adam and Eve ate. And a lot of people believe that that's what we're going to be eating in heaven because, you know, the Bible is about a garden of Eden and, a, and a, in heaven. And, it's, and then it was lost through sin and the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And then the Bible is all about all the problems. And the Israelites were always wanting their meat. And God said, okay, I'm going to let you have it. Then there were diseases that came through. And the Bible says they, they died with the meat in their teeth. And then, as he said, no, we don't want to die anymore. We want the manna back. So he gave them manna. And they started getting healthy. And as you read the Bible, it ends with Revelation. And it starts talking about how we're going to get heaven back. And Jesus came to be our example. And so we're, we're looking towards heaven, right? And so the original diet, Genesis 129, God had it right. And it's really amazing. I have some videos uh, with me. They're right here. And I would be willing to share. Um, if anyone keeps in touch with me, these are for free uh, as far as um, I can't, you know, what I mean is downloading, copying them. No, uh, no problem doing that. There are some secular medical studies. For example, um, an Australian man with a lot of health problems on medications and drugs and everything from the doctors decided, I'm going to go to America and I'm just going to eat uh, plants for 60 days or I'm going to drink the juice of plants for 60 days and see what happens. And he did a, um, a reality TV documentary movie. It is a bestseller. It's called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. And I have it here, and it shows what happens in 60 days if you eat the Garden of Eden diet. Every problem went away. Is that the diabetes? I have, in fact, documented hundreds and hundreds of studies where when they eat God's diet, their health problems disappear. All of them. 256 um, different illnesses have completely disappeared. So, nutrition, initially, God had this plan in Genesis 129 for everything that grew off a tree as a fruit. But in verse 30, what's interesting is sin happened, and God said, I'm going to let you have now the herbs of the field for the healings of the nation. So, herbs, we all agree, you know, in the Philippines, it's, it's known that herbs are good for you. An herb is a is a leaf. So that's the one thing I want to, in this nutrition subject, I want to get it across. When I ask Filipinos, um, so you eat vegetables? They say, yes, we eat vegetables. Yes. Okay, what kind of vegetables do you eat? Who would like to tell me a vegetable they eat? Vegetables, carrots. Um, uh, volunteer. Volunteer. Over here or over here? Do I have a volunteer? A vegetable. Okay, what's the vegetable? What? Ambalaya, what is that? Is that a vegetable? Yes. Um, bitter, bitter corn. What? Bitter. Bitter. The bitter melon? The bitter corn? It's a corn? Does it have a seed in it? Yes. Okay, that's a fruit. So if it has a seed in it, that means it's a fruit. Okay, so ask someone else here. Tell me a vegetable you eat. I don't know what that is. Okay, malungai is a vegetable. Good for you. Okay, what about you? Okay, kamoni tops is a vegetable. Good job. Okay, how about this lady over here? She's not shy. She's our close talker. Chai. It's chai. I don't know what that is. Is that a vegetable? Yes? Cabbage. Yes. Cabbage. Cabbage is a vegetable. Okay. Lettuce. So typically what they say is they say, well, yeah, we have squash and okra and, um, and uh, eggplant and 
And, I'm, and, and every single thing they have just named is a fruit, not a vegetable. So I wanted you to know that most of the things that people think they eat in this country that are vegetables are actually fruits. And they're in the Genesis 129 diet, but not in the verse 30 where sin came. And he says, now, in order to have health, you're going to have to eat the, the vegetables or the leaves of the trees. They're going to be bitter as a reminder of sin in a lot of cases. Herbs are bitter, but that's good for the liver. And that's an herb. There's medicinal plants, leaves, and there's nutritional leaves. Okay? They're all nutritional, but some, the more medicinal, are more bitter. They're more medicinal for, and you eat less. But the ones that are more nutritional, like kamoti leaves, they're not so bitter, and they're really good. And those are the ones we should eat more of, is those green leafy vegetables. It's really interesting. A study was done just to look at the, the green blood of a plant. And the only thing different between the red blood of a human and the green blood of a plant was the center molecule of a green plant was magnesium, and in your blood it was iron. So it makes it red or green with magnesium. Now what's interesting is if you drink that juice or get that juice into your body, there is a transaction or a, um, a miracle that takes place, and that green juice turns to blood throughout with the digestive system, it is able to convert it to blood. So it's like a blood transfusion, but not really a blood transfusion. So it's really good to get your greens and what people are finding now, natural healing experts and in a clinic that I worked at in California, that it has to be green and it needs to, um, if at all possible, be juiced so you can concentrate that, in other words, and get it into the blood so the blood can heal the cancer and those things. So I'm not going to go a lot into all of the bad foods. All I need to say is, in the beginning, God didn't plan on there being any death. He didn't plan on there being any bloodshed. Those things were allowed at the time of the flood. They were allowed to shorten man's life, to, um, as, as we read in the Spirit Prophecy and the Bible. Um, they were allowed because there was no food on. I mean, all, after the flood, there was no vegetation. And so there were all kinds of different problems. But now, it's not a... It's not a an issue of... I'm not trying to make it an issue of you're sinning or you're not sinning. If you have cancer, you don't want to have cancer. It's painful. So I'm here to tell people how to avoid called uh, the preventative medicine, how to avoid the cancers. I'm here to tell you how to get well. Now, some people say, well, it's said in, in medical literature and it's not politically correct to say that it's curable, right? No, there's no cure for it because the American Cancer Society hasn't said there's a cure. They're still looking for a cure. Millions and millions of dollars are put into this finding a cure. They're still driving their limousines or they're riding in their limousines and living in their penthouses, but um, there's no cure. Now, that corporation was set up that when there's a cure, it dissolves. I happen to know some of the people I've met of in that corporation. They don't want it to dissolve. They're going to lose their job. So I don't believe there's going to be a cure found for cancer through a pill. What I believe is that the cure for cancer is the immune system. Mm -hmm. And how we support the immune system is by our diet and lifestyle. Yes. Correct? So nutrition is important. I'm not going to go into all the things you shouldn't eat. I believe that each person here knows in their heart what is the most healthiest. All animals get all of their nutrition from plants. When you eat an animal, you're getting that nutrition secondhand in a package of cholesterol, bad fat, and the disease of the animal and the poisons. Most animals are given six times. The government allows six times more antibiotics given to animals than allowed in people. And the reason why is because they don't really care if there's a mortality rate. It's just a money thing. It's not a not an issue like with humans. And if they're almost dead, they can still sell them for food. So there's a lot of antibiotics, which is a poison, in the animal, which goes into the food, and then people eat it. So animals are becoming more diseased. Plants 
Um, there's some poisons on them, but if you rub, if you wash that off, if you grow your plants, they are still the best source of nutrition. Um, interestingly enough, in this video with this el this elderly lady, um, 1905, a man was born in uh, in a tent, December 7th, 1905 on the grounds of the Seventh-day Adventist Hospital um, before it was built, not in the Philippines, but in Oregon, the United States of America. And that man grew up, um, he, at weaning time, his mother tried to feed him meat, he spit it out. Uh, the dad got angry and put meat in his mouth and held it shut, gave him a spanking, he still spit it out. So they decided, well, they're just gonna feed him fruit and apples and things like that, berries. And eventually, that young man went to school, went to an Adventist college, became a minister, took pre-med, and later in his life, at age 65, he decided to retire. Now, he had been married 10 years, but at his retirement and being married 10 years, he decided to start a family. And so, the, the first and second child were born 18 months apart, and that was my sister and I. And so my father was 65 years old when I was born, and when he was 100 years old, I have a video of him and I swimming in the lake together. My father experienced, in my life, zero disease. He was a vegan from birth. And I was telling the pastor, when he finally passed away from a tragic situation, I had his body examined and they found no disease and no health problems whatsoever for my father. So I, I want to say that I know firsthand, personally, that following a strict plant-based diet, you can avoid all of the diseases. Now a sickness and a disease is a little bit different. Sickness is an effort of nature to free itself from conditions that result in disease. That's what we learned from Ministry of Healing and Health and Happiness. Disease is like cancer, diabetes. A sickness is like a fever. Yeah. It's like a, a cold or a cough. And so when you have those symptoms, you need to recognize that those symptoms are an effort of nature to free itself from conditions. There's two different texts. One is conditions caused from a violation of the laws of health, or it's an effort of nature to free itself from conditions